And welcome to another episode of the starting lineup. I'm Arna Sarkar. We've got Kapil and Jitesh. And we're going to be talking about something we haven't talked about too much on the show yet. It's the MLB. Baseball's about to hit second half of the season. All-Star games coming up, All-Star weekend, all that good stuff. Home run derby. Um, it's been an interesting first half of the season. It's kind of, at least in my mind, has been a little bit overshadowed with like the NBA and NHL playoffs for a while, but I mean we're we're definitely more than in full swing now. As we, you know, about that we we're about at the halfway point. So we got second half of the season basically left at this point. We kind of know who's doing what in each division and what the playoff races are looking like. And there's been like a lot of surprises, but there's also been some you know the usual contenders um continuing to be at the top of their division. So I mean. Yeah, I mean, let's. I guess let's let's dive right into that. Um, I think the Rays and the the Braves leading their divisions. I think that's in in league. That's very interesting, especially if they're in a series of yeah. their own. It's yeah. you know, it's it's great. You know, right now most home runs in history before the break. That's a team that you know. This is a team that could very well go the entire way. Um, I'm excited to see how they do. There's still a lot of baseball left. Uh, some big series coming up, but. I mean, like right now, this is probably the biggest series you've had all year against, you know, the what was considered the best team in baseball for a long time, but not anymore. So, Braves, the series win in Tropicana Field, and that's that, it's a great place to be heading into the break. 60 wins. We can definitely get to 100 wins if, you know, the team keeps it up. Yeah, sure. It looks like it. I think they've like eclipsed the Rays as the hottest team in baseball, obviously, the Rays. And, yeah, uh, I mean, great well, start. Tampa, Tampa Bay started off the season thirteen and zero, mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, I mean, you we can't really say Tampa Bay fell off because they're still they're still a top three team in uh, in baseball right now. But uh, considering they fell that, off comparatively to where they were, is I yeah, the correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, that's a good way of saying it. Like, I mean, you start off thirteen and zero. I mean, like, I mean, far from like the all time record wins. Like, I mean. That that's far from one sixteen pace back in uh two thousand one with the Seattle Mariners, but like considering considering the like the the rocket start Tampa Bay had, safe to say that they've that they've um, lost a bit of an edge of where they were. Uh, past yeah. ten games, they were three and seven, including right now. Uh, they've been. I think they're on a seven game losing streak. I think. Yeah, seven like game that. losing streak. Um, which I, which is yeah, that's like a. The long their their longest of the season. So I mean they started out their team now and now they're on seven game moving streak. But you know, maybe the all-star break's coming for a good t- at a good time for them so they can mm-hmm. regroup and yeah we saw you know I let's mean... not forget let's not forget Tampa Bay is still missing like a few of their best pitchers. Like um I don't know what is it with Tampa Bay. Like every season somehow they get injured and yet there's and yet they're still underrated contenders. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean it's kind of similar to like you know I think it's like the NBA All-Star game, I guess, you know, you can just like go ahead and overhaul your team and then, you know, you can, you know, make the necessary adjustments and, you know, that's where the second half, that's where, you know, the te- like we know who the better teams actually are. You're getting better, more of a chance to, you know, see what needs to be done, see what doesn't need to be done. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I would argue overhauling might just make your team worse. I mean, well, not a full overhaul, but you know, making adjustments like your rotation, your, your starting lineup. Uh, ironically, that would that's probably uh, what you need yeah. to do right now. Yeah, you don't want to overhaul your team completely. You're not the Athletics. You want to make sure that you have your necessary, you know, your necessary players up. I mean, or the Padres. I mean, they. I mean, AJ Preller would. I don't know. He'd probably he'd probably sell Fort Knox or something to get a Ellie De La Cruz right now uh, on the podcast. Oh yeah, I mean, who wouldn't mm. at this point? Uh, I would like uh, like aside from like the like you know everyone knows who Shohei is. Everyone knows who's everyone knows who's Mike Trout. Like everyone knows this, and of course this Fort guy is the next Fort big Angels. one. I mean, like, have you seen his speed? I mean, like he's reaching base in like yeah. Speed. Maybe no, like, like one or two there, seconds. No, there's a stat cast report saying like at his at his peak speed, he's uh 31 feet per he's running at 31 feet per second, meaning that he can get from he reaches base in less than three seconds, which is yeah, he can travel so like at peak speed, he could reach from first to second base 
in less than three seconds. And speaking of Valley De La Cruz, like you saw the game yesterday where oh, he just yeah. three bases. Yeah, he's the three bases and one at bat. He's on second, third, and home. Yeah, but I would Great. say, like, aside from like the huge names of like Shohei, Trout, and and every and Acuna and all those guys, I'd say like, and of course Ellie is now coming into the light. I would say like some of the most exciting guys to watch. Uh, in the MLB right now would be Francisco Alvarez, the uh, Mets catcher, uh, Corbin Carroll, um, a very yeah, underrated he, star. With the, the, with, the, with the walk-off last night. Yeah, very underrated star. And then uh, Luis Arez of the uh, Arez, yeah. Marlins. Yeah, yeah. who who is, you know, in that conversation for MVP, but, you know, no, no, with the no, season, no, you know, I don't know about MVP conversation, having... but he's in the he's in the Ted Williams conversation, as in as in well, yeah, Ted, the four hundred streak. Yep, yeah. Ted Williams, last guy to hit four hundred, and it could have been Tony Gwynn of mm-hmm. nineteen ninety four, but then you know, yeah. baseball strike happened, so Gwynn was robbed of that, along with the Expos were robbed of a World Series win, but mm-hmm. um, who knows, like. Luis Arez, then, right, now, right now on pace, he's three eighty eight this season. So, which is, I mean, has it's, some to say that's damn needs. good is a tremendous understatement. Understatement. I completely agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I I'm very excited to see where Luis Arez goes. Like we saw, like if you guys watch the World Baseball Classic, he was big for Venezuela. Like he was absolutely sensational. And, yeah. and he's keeping it up here in Miami. So I'd say he's definitely uh, one of the most exciting, like, aside from, like, the huge names, of course. Although, mm-hmm. like, you know, they're slowly becoming the huge name. So I mean, we haven't mentioned Ronald Acuna Jr., who uh, will probably... I, I, did, I did mention Acuna. I said aside from, okay. like, Shohei, Trout, and Acuna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's definitely the name being slept on. Um, You know, he's having a... Phenomenal. He's season an right now. he's an MVP front runner right now for the for the National League. Like, yeah, oh yeah, Big and time. of course, and of course, Shohei is killing it in the AL. Like, it's yeah. I don't. But think I mean, like now with this recent injury, right? I mean, like, Angels have like no room for mistakes right now. Mike Trout's out. Shohei Otani's yeah. out. No, no, no. no, no. To, I'll, you know, I'll tell you who has no room for. Well, I mean, the Angels as of right now are sitting in a fairly comfortable position. I mean, comfortable, comfortable kind of being an understatement because while the, while they are under 500 at the moment and are still a couple back a couple of gains back from the wild card race uh because i mean right now they're trailing um well t- new york uh, the the yankees and uh, the blue jays are tied for the uh final wild card spot and then followed in order it's boston minnesota seattle and then lost and then uh la they're still sitting in a fairly decent position for the all-star break honestly uh but i'd say the two teams that have no margin of error right now are the two teams with the big well three teams honestly with the uh they're the same teams that have the highest payroll in the league the mets the yanks and the padres all -hmm. three teams what do they have in common besides from having the highest payroll in the league by a margin they all three suck royally like um, I mean the the Mets ha- the Mets have at least been um, uh, they they've been doing good recently. Aside from the loss yesterday at San Diego, they're they're on a six game win streak. So at least the Mets have shown some resiliency, some fight, and I think if they if they win the if they have the um if they achieve the seat the series victory over the Padres, uh. Then there'll be a momentum shifter. I mean, they they've already shown plenty of fight so far. May, maybe they're finally starting to turn around. Maybe they're a loop uh, a late bloomer, but of course, there's still a lot of work left to be done. And we can't and we can't say like post All Star break. Oh, there's still half a season left. No, no, no. That's gonna snap by real quickly. So Padres, San Diego. I mean, uh, Mets, Padres, Yankees. Y'all are running on very limited time. There's 80 games left. Uh, this is your do or die moment. You three have the highest payroll in the league. Um, and you've been so far a grave disappointment to fans that aren't to fans of both the Mets, Yankees, and Padres. Like uh mm-hmm. I would like I mean, San Diego is the is the team that's more pul- is the team that's more perplexing to me in terms of underperforming. Like the Mets, like to start to start out the year, 
like um I mean Verlander not be Verlander not being there till I think uh late May or early June. Uh that that per that certainly is taking a toll. And of course Edwin Diaz uh like te tearing his knee ligament during the World yeah. Baseball Classic. Uh that's put a massive strain on the bullpen, but David Robertson's been excellent as the, as the uh, Mets closer. Um the Yankees, you can at least make the excuse that every team in the AL East is playing great. I mean, come on, like the worst the worst team yeah. in the AL East is the Boston Red Sox, and they're four games over five hundred at the moment. Yeah. And honestly, I don't even think Boston expected to be at five hundred at this point. I I really don't think so. Uh, but the Yankees have been tremendously underperforming. Josh Donaldson needs to go. J Josh Donaldson, like, why are you still on the team? Like. Like why I, I I get that Brian Cashman has a huge time admitting like has a huge problem admitting when he's wrong, and he's especially like you know locked up in his skull like uh Brian Cashman, but Josh Donaldson is one of the many mistakes on the Yankees. Like you know Josh Donaldson's I mean this is gonna sound great, uh his last ten hits were home runs. Yeah, you know how many hits he's had in the entire season? 14 yeah that's insane yeah yeah it's july wow. he's had 14 goddamn hits <laughs> so it's like an all or nothing like either he gives you like a home no, run no that's the problem with the yankees right that's the problem they're they're shooting for only the home runs and see what happens when aaron judge is out of your lineup i mean yeah, where, where yeah. he got injured in uh in dodger stadium the yankees are absolutely useless even though they have guys like giancarlo stanton even though they have IK well I can't really say IKF is that great but uh like the Yankees should still be at least floating like at least treading I mean, like did you see they lost like by 13 or 14 runs last night to, to the, the uh, uh, or a few nights ago to the Orioles yeah the Orioles are good but like you know they you no, know no Baltimore Baltimore has been an extremely surprising team like uh I oh yeah uh -huh. I honestly don't know if anyone is um you know I, I don't know if anyone has I don't need I mean the Orioles showed a lot of like they definitely showed a lot of promise towards the end of last season. Uh like because they just missed out on the on getting into the wild card. But uh the Orioles they they cer they certainly showed a lot of fight uh towards the end of last season. So it I mean safe to say there were expectations on them, but not not of 20 not nearly 20 wins above the all-star not not nearly 20 wins above 500 by the all-star break uh, expectations i mean um and you know speaking of speaking of the orioles and speaking of the yankees let's talk let's talk about uh aaron hicks now how he's had a current resurgence with uh with the uh, orioles and uh you know of course hicks best known for being a yankee for past couple of years getting a seven year 70 million dollar deal and absolutely not living up to it at all after 2018 yeah arnoff would know i'm sorry mm, yeah but of course he's far from the best player in the orioles that would go to that would go to adley and then of course gunner henderson cedric mullins um i don't know the future is very bright in baltimore like aside from aside from the orioles Maybe the Ravens, if they finally achieve something, um, fingers could, crossed. Yeah, could, yeah uh -huh. but Baltimore is definitely one of the most surprising teams in the league. And, you know, like I've already talked about, like, the most surprising players, aside from the big three, I'd say the most surprising teams as of right now, uh, Baltimore, uh, the Texas Rangers, because I mean, yes. they're succeeding. Yeah. The, their level of success. Uh, I I can't speak. Their level of success right now, with Jacob Degrom sidelined till the end till ton till uh twenty twenty four, is remarkable. Is remarkable. Right. I I don't know, mm -hmm. and, and I Still I don't know the what Astros, to say about, yeah. about the Texas Rangers, and of course and then the Arizona Diamondbacks too. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. Is one of their best players, and let's talk about the Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati uh -huh. sports are finally picking up. We got the Bengals and we got the Reds now. I mean, hell, why not? Uh, Gary Bettman, throw in, give us a Cincinnati hockey team. That's all I ask for. That's all I ask for. We don't need basketball in Cincinnati, but hmm. give, give us a 
Give us a Cincinnati hockey team. What 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 should we call it? Hmm. If we were to have a Cincinnati hockey team, what would we call it? Uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about that later. But yeah, we could talk about that later. And even even the Marlins are doing good. Like I don't I don't know if anyone's ever cared about the Marlins this entire season, aside from Luis Arez being in the four hundred conversation. Right now, yeah. amongst the wild card. They're still 13 games above 500 right now. They're sitting at 52-39. So Marlins have also been playing well. And of mm. course, one more one more pick I'd give for that is San Francisco. I mean, they're currently sitting outside of the wild card right now at the time of this recording, 48 and 41. But they're in a bloodbath uh, of for the uh, third wild card spot uh, for the third wild wild car- card spot. Uh, I'm not going to try saying that five times fast. Between they're in a they're in a heavy race right now between Philadelphia, Milwaukee, uh, I guess somewhat closely followed by the Mets in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Philly and Philly also got together like sweeping sweeping the race, so they're also in a good spot. Yeah. The Brewers battling it out with the Reds, top the NL Central. The Reds really like turned things around because they had a 13 game win streak on their own. Uh, of their own, and then obviously Ali Dale Cruz has been like absolutely sensational during that time. They also got Joey Votto back, so I mean, it's been yeah, that's been crazy. So I mean, it'll be interesting to see who comes on top of that division. I think it's going to be the Reds, though. Uh, of the uh, NL Central. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure: it's definitely not going to be St. Louis. <laughs> but hey, um, you never know. Bigger things have. I mean, bigger surprises have happened in baseball. The Nats, when they won in 2019, um, they were at their lowest point. I think they were um, uh, at their lowest point. Uh, I think they're they're either sitting um, I forget at the moment, like either 12 games back from uh, from a wild card or 12 games back or 12 games under 500 during during June. I think they were projected to have a 0.1 percent chance of winning the World Series. And what wow. do they do? They win the whole damn thing, but. So bigger surprises have happened, but at the moment, I don't really see anything uh, aspiring for St. Louis. I mean, but yeah, I am I would imagine Cincinnati's, I wouldn't call them a clear favorite because uh, Milwaukee's still on the path. Mil- Milwaukee, right. Milwaukee is not too far from Cincinnati at the moment, but uh, Chicago, uh, the Cubs, uh, Pittsburgh got off to a hot start and tore. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they to uh, start the off, season, but, but uh, they've uh, somewhat leveled off, and of course, St. Louis is quite pathetic after um, Pujols and Molina retired. So I I'd say Cincinnati's biggest threat to the division is Milwaukee. Yeah, no, I yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, they're they're both like like, like right there, and I think they're also in, in a series as 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 there's some recurrence going on. I think same things with, with the Phillies and the Marlins too. So it's, it's always interesting when when that when that happens and they're battling for those spots. And we I think we just saw with the, the Yankees and the Orioles, um, because the Yankees aren't weren't too far away. And then so the Yankees won the first two games, um and then then they lost the last two. So then the Orioles kinda opened some space up including fourteen one win um the other night. So I mean yeah, so, so sometimes that can happen. Now the Yankees, I think, are standing yeah. right outside the last wild card. They're tied with the Blue Jays, um, right yeah, in the and, in that division. And the defending champs might finally be starting to pick it up, uh, even even while missing a uh, Jordan Alvarez right now, because, uh, in the past ten games they're seven and three. Now they're, I I wouldn't say they're slowly starting to look like their own their own selves. Uh, only tr- only trailing uh, te- Texas in the uh, AL Central. I mean, Texas right now is 52-38, uh, Houston 50-40. So it's anyone's ball game after, after right. the All-Star mm-hmm. break. So I wouldn't fret too much about that race un- until maybe late August or so. so. But it looks like Houston is finally starting to turn a corner. And, you know, they started off the season slow with um, – yeah. Uh, Altuve starting off on the uh, on the injured list because uh, I think it was a, a fractured hand or something from the World Baseball Classic when he's playing in Venezuela. He got hit by a pitch, and then uh, of course uh, Luis Garcia, the famous uh, um, one of their key components from uh, 
one of their key starting pitchers from uh, their championship last season. He's out with Tommy John. So uh, I guess it's almost like, I wouldn't call it a chess match, but it's almost, it's almost like a, you know, you know, spur of the moment where Texas or ironically, both Texas teams have lost uh, one of their races for the next season. Well, two seasons really. And they're, and they're throwing and they're just trying to survive um, and they're clawing back like they are the tiger. So um, yeah, I, I think, I think uh, the Rangers versus uh, the Astros for the AL division uh, for the, I mean, for the AL West uh, division title, it'll certainly be interesting after the all-star break. Yeah, I think so. I think that's one of the division races to keep an eye out on. And then, like, like we discussed, like, that in all central. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the Rays, like, can keep it going in the second half. I, I mean, I think they'll rebound it, but, I mean, the whole division is pretty competitive. And seeing I mean, who I, gets a I imagine you wouldn't too. want the Tim. I imagine you wouldn't want the Rays to rebound for obvious reasons, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, it's like they got such a big head start. But, like, now... I think the Orioles aren't like too far away. So because yeah, of, because yeah, of this recent Baltimore, streak. Baltimore is uh Baltimore is not that far behind. They're they're at the t- at the time of this recording, uh, they're only, I mean, both teams share thirty five losses right now. Uh, Bal- Baltimore is Baltimore is four wins behind. So they've played wow. four less teams than uh, Tampa Bay. And oh, and, they're, so they're, okay, so they're like basically four wins behind, like time yeah. of losses. Yeah, like um. Tampa Bay's, I mean, Baltimore's not that far behind from uh, Tampa Bay, but hmm, uh, from Baltimore, New York, Toronto, and Boston are fairly far behind. So, like, bo- uh, like New-, New York, Toronto, and Boston are e- are each eight games back from uh from uh Toronto. I mean, uh, Tampa Bay. So I see. Okay. You know, those three will be in a fight to the death for the third wild co- for the third wild card spot uh, right now, which is. Uh, coincidentally, we're all they're sitting right now. Yankees and Toronto are tied for the third wild card, and Boston is uh two games out from that. Hmm. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's interesting. That's going to be the toughest. It's already been the toughest division. Baseball, five teams have a winning record, and I think all five teams are ahead of like what's going on in the AL Central, where like the Twins are barely above five hundred right now. So that's uh, very I mean, interesting. Well, the t- the Twins aren't even leading the the. The Twins aren't even leading right now. It's Cleveland. The Guardians. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I I said this before. I've said this countless times. Not just uh, counting it. Not just counting this season. I'm talking about for all the sports. Uh, I mean, of course, there's still there's still 80 games left of the season. Well, anyway, uh, Cleveland Cleveland's played 89 games, so a little less than 80 for them. But I've said this regardless for any sport: hockey, baseball, basketball, football lacrosse whatever soccer wh- whatever sport if your team finishes under 500 as a division leader or whatever you don't sport, deserve to be in the playoffs exactly 100 percent, 100 even 500 on it like well 500 is okay because you know you're like okay no, but me- like if you're mediocre- below 500 come on come on mediocrity should not be rewarded honestly but like i mean, I mean it shouldn't but like at the same time right Come on, and like if you finish five hundred, like as it, and you're in the playoffs, that's like, that's the league giving you the pity trophy, saying here, you're you're like the best of the worst. I mean, at least pretend <laughs> to try in the playoffs. Uh, like try, like it, it's a pity trophy. It, like I, I'm I'm serious in favor for it, but like if one division completely jacks it up for baseball, so be it. Like. Like, come on, if, if Cle- let's say Cleveland wins the division at 80 and 82. Oh. Come on. Come on. Like, you're telling me you really want to see that in the playoffs, a sub-500 team? Like, when was the last, uh, tell me this, in all the sports, when was the last time a sub-500 team in the playoffs did so- did something worthy of accomplishment? The uh, Washington and in, in the NFL when they won the division, oh, yeah. 
2021. What was it? The the tank division. What what was their record? The like NFC East. Six, yeah. nine, and one, seven and nine, or something like that. Seven and nine. Yeah. They were seven and nine. I mean, and you know, they took they, they took, they you know, the battle go- against Tampa Bay. I, I yeah, the, they took the goat himself, yeah. you know. They, and then the next lost. year, like straight out, and the next year they straight out beat that Tampa Bay team, like you know, by 10 points. Yeah, but so, and then let, let's talk about and then speaking again of football. Remember, I, I forget what year was it. I think it was 2011, 2012, and the Carolina Panthers won the division at seven, eight, and one. What did they? What did they? I think they won against Seattle, if I if I remember correctly, or maybe I'm mm-hmm. thinking of two different games. But it's like they won seven, eight, and one. And what yeah, happened? Yeah, 2014. Yeah, that oh, was 2014. Okay, yeah. So then they won against Seattle, right? Uh, can you check that for me, real, real quick? They, um, yeah. Um... They won against Arizona, lost against Seattle. Oh, so they beat Arizona. They beat Arizona, they lost to Seattle. Oh, ah, okay. All right, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, so maybe the Panthers are the only, like, sub-500 playoff team that, that have done something in recent memory of any sports. Or, or wait, uh, Kapil, while, while you're on the web really quickly, can you uh, check which, uh, if you can find anything, which sub-500 uh, playoffs teams have actually done anything uh, recently? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, like, Arna, uh, and while, while I meant, uh, this is one of the, the, in 2010, right? You had the Seahawks who, you know, behind oh, the Marshall Oh, yeah, Lynch, that's right. Yeah. That's the right. Saints. Beast Beast yeah. Yeah. Beast they, they, Beast they, torched, yeah. they torched the Saints. Oh, yeah. How, how could I forget that? Well, they didn't torch them. It was close. It's just that they just ran away with it at the end. Oh, it's they not a, they it's torched not a the Saints defense is what I'm saying. Defense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was something. Um, mm-hmm. Anything else? I mean, like, I while Cocteau's stretching anything. it up, like, Arnoff, like, imagine if this past year, like, Imagine if, imagine if like the Detroit Red Wings made the playoffs like this past season, or like, or no, 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 better example, this past season's New York Jets. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been a pitiful disgrace to sports? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly. It would have been really bad. Like no one wants to see that crap. Mm-hmm. I agree. But right. like at the same time, right? You it's like what you're like, gonna do, though. No, that's, that's easy. You eliminate the division, and you give the high, and you give the team that finished with the higher record a buy into the ALDS, and then and then you have the lower two teams that, uh, while well, fought ad- admirably, sorry, you <laughs> you didn't have the superior record. You two teams are now the wild cards. Yeah, I guess you could just go off like overall records, but then it's like. There wouldn't really be a point of winning the division. Okay, but how about how about this? In a world of hypotheticals, um, but let's say that I mean this will almost never happen, like mathematically. But like um, let's say every team in let's say every team in baseball finishes eighty and eighty two. We we don't have a team that oh, okay. win, we don't have one team over five hundred or even a team at five hundred. E- easy thing, and baseball just cancels the World Series, and we'll have that again for the first time since nineteen ninety four. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some teams gonna have like a winning record, or maybe not. Um, I mean, if every team goes like, yeah, I suppose it could happen if every team goes like eighty-one. Yeah, but, uh, come on, come on. Ma- like mathematically, you mean Kapil would have a greater chance of winning the lottery at the same time than that would than that yeah would be happening. Yeah, like, I, I feel like out of those thirty teams, and possibly could be even more in the late in the near future. It like one team would accidentally be five hundred. Accidentally, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you become cha- and then you become champions by default. <sighs> yeah, that's that's an interesting hypothetical, but um, it's never gonna happen. Yeah, no, there's there's no way. Plus, some teams are just way better than others. Uh, Kapil, were were you able to find any anything else or, like? Any sub huh? I mean, like the only MLB teams that have met that you know are sub five hundred are um, teams that uh the nineteen seventy three Mets they 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 were close to five hundred but they went on to win the World Series but nothing recently yeah. honestly they didn't win the World Series in seventy three went on to win the National League pennant in the World Series at eighty two oh, oh, and seventy nine oh, gotcha gotcha all right gotcha yeah. It's close, but 
honestly, you shouldn't expect too much from losing teams that make the playoff. We saw that with Tampa exactly. Bay last should... year. We saw that with um, we saw that with Washington a few years back. No, I, so... I'm like to your point correctly. Like, which is why, like, any team that finishes as the division leader, so called, of mm-hmm. like when your entire division is just a division of suck. You don't mm-hmm. deserve the playoffs. Eradicate that division. Pretend that pretend that division never even happened. Well, like on the flip side, right? What if that reformat the playoffs around the teams that have actually tried and you know have actually won? I mean, it can't be that hard to to reformat. I mean, it'll be awkward, and it'll certainly be weird. Like telling the team, yeah, like it'd certainly be weird. Like I'm just taking the I'm just taking Cleveland as an example right now. I mean, they could finish over 500. They're still, they still have 70 games left to play, but it'd be like this. Like imagine me telling Terry Francona, the, uh, the Cleveland's head coach right now, uh, dear Terry, due to the, even though your division, e- even though your team has won the division because everyone else has decided to suck, not as much as you, Despite, uh, in spite of you winning the division, you guys did finish with a sub-500 record, and therefore you are not invited to the 2023 MLB playoffs. Instead, uh, we will compensate you with a guaranteed uh, 15th overall pick in the next year's draft, and you will have to enjoy the playoffs uh, not being centered around your pathetic baseball team. Thank you, and enjoy next season. Sincerely, Rob Manfred. How about that? Not the worst idea. Yeah. Why why am I not why am I not the commissioner? <laughs> yeah, again, like that's that's something that like would never happen to them. They'd have to like make that very clear from the start because yeah, they decided that like mid season, you know, and like no, I, I would really ser- I would seriously do that. Any team any team that leads the division. They should yeah. just do best records then, like you know. Yeah, um, but you know, the, I mean, why, then what's the use of divisions in the first place? Well, yeah, that's true. Like, if you aren't going to give the division one, like, a spot, so are you, are you suggesting like kind of make it like hockey, where it's like the best team like gets like the president's trophy or something? I mean, well, oh, <laughs> we could see something. I don't know. It's just like a I, hypothetical well, scenario. I... But yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, I guess, you could last, just, like, year, the, I guess the, last year the Dodgers would have won the uh, President's Trophy, but if that were to be a thing, like for for the uh, MLB, mm-hmm. right? I just anyway. don't want to see the Astros win another C- World Series. Is all. I don't mm-hmm. care what happens. They, they might still have something in their cards. Like I, unfortunately, they'll they're not they're not going to be out of it. But I just don't want them to win. I mean, like I, I, enough I think... success. I think Houston still has at least another year or two of uh year or two of potential championship aspirations within them, at least. Oh in yeah, the- yeah. I mean they they are going to get to the you know playoffs and they are going to be you know in that conversation for you know one of the best teams in baseball when that time comes. But right, nobody wants to see them in that spot. Well, that's a big difference. Nobody except Houston fans. Yeah. Right. I I imagine I imagine the Yankees fans. Would rather be than watch the Astros go back to the World Series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think this would be a good time for us to do like some World Series predictions as time starts to wind down. So, um, you know. Well, but, but like, we know what, you know, scenario. we know one team is going to be there. It's no. going to be the Braves. No, then... no, no, no. Dream scenario. Th- this would be the MLB's dream scenario. The Cincinnati Reds. Versus the Los Angeles Angels. Shohei versus Ellie De La Cruz. Let's go. Give me that. Yeah, that would be amazing. But I mean, it would be amazing. But I think it, it could I mean, happen. It could. I think it's going to be one team is going to be the Braves. I mean, like, let's go ahead and no, pencil it, that it, in. I mean, I'd, I think we I, could do that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. This season, they just look like unstoppable. I'm, if we mm-hmm. had a battle of the top dogs, Braves, Braves, Rays, Braves, Rays, Braves would probably mm-hmm. win that one. Yeah. No, 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 Braves. We already definitely. decided that too, haven't we? No, a- Atlanta, Atlanta would not sweep. I'd give them in five, a gentleman sweep. Yeah, I, I think. Well, so. I mean, like that's we're, what's we're happening now, isn't it? Too, like, yeah. like you know. Yeah, I mean, and for what the twenty third season in a row, 
at the time at the time of this uh recording it's probably not going to happen but it, it you never know it could Mets mm-hmm. Yankees isn't going to happen it's it's yeah. not no mm-hmm. I mean first of all because nobody would like nobody first would of all, because the Yankees suck right now second because the Mets suck right now and third even if both teams did make it to October baseball um the Mets I mean, uh, for firstly, the Yankees can never vanquish the Astros. Like that, that's been a proven fact. Right. Uh, without mm-hmm. cheating, that's that's a proven fact. Um, then I don't know. I don't even know if the Yankees would be able to take on Baltimore. They probably won't be able to take on Tampa Bay. Uh, and as for the Mets, well, aside from having a huge hole to climb out of, would they be able to take on the Dodgers? No idea. Would they be able to take on the Braves? Hell no. Would they be able, would they be able to Well hold... nobody can take on the Braves right now? Just yeah. the best team in baseball all around. Yeah. I mean, would they be able to hold their own against Arizona? They showed that in the last series, so who knows? But would they be able to vanquish their demons in San Diego? I don't know. So Mets Yankees for those reasons is definitely not happening. I mean, I could be wrong because you know it's a few months from now, but yeah. I really don't see it happening, but dream dream scenario. I mean, but I think I think a good. Uh, I mean, of course, this would never be a World Series, but I think a I think a nice playoff series would be the Battle of Texas Rangers Astros. I'd oh, love be to, really good to see. I'd love to see that. Yeah, that would be a good playoff series. Yeah. Maybe like ALCS or or something like that, but um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that that certainly be interesting. Um, I guess real quick before you go, what do you guys think about Victor Wembanyama's debut in the summer league? Pitiful. Yeah. Well, okay, it's one game, and he hasn't, you know, he hasn't, you know, really had much, you know, work done yet. He it it's decent. I'll put it like that. I'll give it a six or seven out of ten. Well, Spurs, well, Spurs did sign a Popovich for another five five years. Yeah, so. and you know that what is that what is that you know what does that tell us? It tells us they they're deeply you know trusting you know the coach to get some stuff done, and you know for good reason too. But like you know, he has all. Bamiyama is like you know, has some of the most potential anyone's ever seen in a basketball player. And well, you know, we, we say this, but it's up to him to prove it. It's up to him to prove it, and you know, while the summer league, it's a, it's a debut. I mean, like you always aren't gonna you know get like 25, 30 points in your first game. You need you know you need to test the waters first, and then you need to you at, know at the go same time it, there. At the same time, though, it's a summer league. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, like if but people are already criticizing that you know, like oh, 